Hey, what is going on guys? It's Starshay and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new updates to Rise to War. So if you guys do enjoy this video, then please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So as I said, we are going to be talking about the newest updates to Rise to War and the stuff in particular we're going to be talking about is one, the new tile taking system in terms of taking an enemy's tiles a way that you can get around it kind of and two we're going to be talking about siege and the changes to siege so yeah it's going to be very interesting so first off we have tiles okay and uh in top oh let me just take this there you go grain production great and in terms of tiles you know taking neutral tiles that's fine you know that stays the same however if you are taking an enemy's tile right and this is regardless of if you're in friendly territory, like I am currently, or if you're in territory that is owned by an enemy, you know, it, it's the same. So let me just show you guys, right? You can see my Theoden, he's right over here, right? And this is within Withered Gardens, which my faction of Lorien owns. And in order to take a single 130 piece of land, right? You would think that this is a draw and that's why I haven't captured it, but no. Now, I defeat the army, perfect, but even after defeating the army, I have to still take another five minutes to actually occupy it. And honestly, I, it's just going to slow down, well, it's going to slow down a lot the rate at which a faction can push an enemy or a rate at which, you know, you can actually clear enemy tiles out because five minutes to capture one tile that means if i want to capture for example five tiles with theoden right that is going to take me well obviously the time to hit each tile and the marching time between them but let's just say they're all next to each other right so marching time is like you know 10 seconds or something so nothing we're going to factor in so five tiles owned by the enemy next to each other if i want to take all five tiles with my theoden that is going to take me 25 minutes which is kind of crazy but you know that's just the way it is now. And in order to get around this, and I'm gonna test this out right now with you guys, I think I have a method that you can use to actually get around. This. So you can see there's a 90 power tile here. It's owned by a dwarf. So we're gonna attack it with our Auron. She's gonna clear the army and then she's gonna go into that five minute waiting period. And something that one of my friends um, actually suggested uh, yeah, if you want to expedite the system, you could run a hitter and like three ghost armies. Have the hitter kill the armies, then send a ghost to occupy it. So this was actually thought up by DJ uh, from my fellowship. And yeah, then we're going to try it out right now. So you can see we've killed the army now, right? Siege is on 0%. Tile will recover in 6 minutes. And our Arwen will occupy the tile in 5 minutes. So what he's saying is, now that we've hit this, we can use a ghost army, for example... We have this Elidin army. Oh, wait. Nope. He's occupied with tavern tips at the moment. Whoops. Uh, let's speed that up. Perfect. Claim that. Claim that. Great stuff. And we're going to now send Elidin at this tile and see if he can now capture it. So if he can capture it, this will be a... Well, it's still kind of annoying. You're going to have to use two separate armies, but... What you people are going to have to do then is they will have their main armies, right? So either their main PvP armies or their main uh, tile or uh, tiler armies or pathing armies or whatever that you're going to use to, you know, just capture enemy tiles and get rid of them. And then behind those armies, they're going to have to also run like ghost armies with just a few troops to actually capture it. Nope, nope, that doesn't work. Okay, guys, so that is confirmed. There is no way to get around this update, unfortunately. So if you are capturing an enemy tile, it's going to take you five minutes to capture that tile. If you send one army at it, if you send two armies, if you send three armies at it, it's not going to matter. Once you defeat the army that's defending the tile, like the AI army that is defending the tile, you are still going to have to wait that five minutes to actually occupy it. And there's nothing you can do about it. I honestly don't care about this 90 tile, so I'm just going to ignore that. But yeah, that is kind of rough. But that was only the first part of our video. We're going to move on to part two now. And part two is siege. So if you look at critical crossings, and this one is not looking great right now for my faction, 
but you will see, okay, that has absolutely no siege on it. There we go. You will see this critical crossing has 400,000 siege, and above that it has 30 level 35 armies. And you're probably thinking that's not too bad, right? I mean, it's only 400k siege, that's, that's nothing, you could literally solo that. Thing is, they've changed siege. <laughs> so if I go and I look at my Gimli, so this is the highest siege army that I field. He now does a grand total of 666 siege. So imagine, like, <laughs> let me look at my Theoden, right? Theoden does 200 siege. So let's just say on average, I can do 500 siege a hit, right? That means it's going to take me two hits to do 1,000 siege. That's 20 hits for 10k siege. You see where I'm going with this? 200 hits for 100k siege. That means it's going to take me 800 hits with an with a army that does 500 siege damage just to take this critical crossing. Which means, let's say you are you have one full fellowship in your faction, that is 100 people, and each of you all have two armies only, okay? Because not everyone, you know, runs three or four armies. So let's say everyone has two armies, and they're all attacking or crossing. So obviously they have to kill defenders and stuff, which is going to take up stamina and things. But let's just say that's not a thing. To, my, to siege that 400,000 siege, your 100 players are going to have to hit 800 times. That, that's 8 hits per person. And that's all 100 people being on, being active at the same time to do that. So as you can see, it's kind of crazy. And in order to take a single crossing, you're pretty much going to have to have an entire faction to do so. And well, my season kind of is going a bit south because, you know, Kondo have been pushing us. And as you can see, they own all these critical crossings. But if we come here, right, this crossing has 1,200 siege, but this crossing has 650,000 siege. If we had, let's say we had held out here, right, up until this crossing was, you know, uh, 650k and army siege had been nerfed into the ground, how would Condor, even though they're stronger than us or they have more actives than us, be able to take this crossing from us, right? 60 level 45 armies, and then above that, 650,000 siege. Even if they're left completely alone, they're going to kill the, all the armies, fine. But to get that amount of siege is going to be absolutely insane. And imagine while they're sieging, they have even just 20 players from Not Lorien sending armies there to snipe their siege armies and, you know, to defend the crossing. It's going to make sieging a critical crossing absolutely terrifying for any faction. And if you're a smaller faction, like we have, well, my, my uh, faction, Not Lorien, has basically 250 players right? Gondo, I think, also has 200, 300 players. But imagine if you're a smaller faction, like, I don't know, I would assume Rohan doesn't have as many players. Let's say Rohan have 100 people. For them to actually take one of those crossings is going to be impossible. They're never going to be able to exit their spawn area. But yeah, I mean, I guess these are all stuff to slow down the game in terms of the how the map progresses how the season progresses you know they want the season to take longer so that it feels fuller they don't want the season to just end in the first three weeks by doing all this you know it's going to take factions a lot of time to exit starting regions it's going to take them a lot of time to push into enemy owned territory which means you know the season is going to go a lot slower i think however this was the wrong approach to it instead there were a couple well there's many other ways you know you could increase the the season length okay not increase the season length i would say increase the longevity of each season's campaign and you could do that in a variety of ways right one i mean already making stuff into countries like this and having these critical crossings that already slows it down even with us all having normal siege damage you know because the faction on the defensive can just sit and, you know, defend all the critical crossings into their land, and they'll be able to defend it pretty easy. That being said, you know, maybe they wanted to make it slightly harder. Fine. I don't think a siege nerf was needed. I don't think that taking an enemy tower should take you five minutes. Instead, they could have done something like, after you take a crossing, you know, or 
if an enemy attacks a crossing, so let's say we're defending this crossing here, all right? And Erebo owns this side, we own this side. Erebo attack this crossing. After they attack it, they could literally just put a cooldown. So like, after a crossing is fast attacked, you have, well, you have like an hour, I think, before defenders reset, right? They could say after that hour expires, the defenders reset, and fine, you can leave the siege as is, but the crossing becomes not attackable for 6 hours or 12 hours, you know? If you make it 12 hours, then that's pretty much going to ruin a war horn for another faction, which means, well, for another for the fellowship that you're fighting, which means they're going to have to wait for the next war declaration to go through it, or they're going to have to just finish it off, you know, using, uh, you know, the siege debuff that they have. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of different ways they could have done that. But yeah, these are the two biggest things currently that have stood out and that have caused a lot of plans to change, you know. So if you're in a season at the moment and you're, you know, actively fighting or actively at war, how have these changes affected you? How has, you know, having this five minute timer affected you? And how has the siege changes affected you, you know? Are you guys still able to take and capture keeps? Are you guys still able to take and capture critical crossings? Just let me know down below in the comment section. As for myself personally, I'm going to have to see how a critical crossing goes in terms of siege before I can fully make up my mind on it. But just looking at the numbers, it does look like it's going to be kind of impossible for any smaller faction to do. The tile one, I mean, it's just a bit annoying, you know, because I can't just come on for half an hour and, you know, send my commanders out, capture a whole bunch of enemy tiles, etc. and do that. Now I'm going to have to literally spend five minutes per one tile. So I'm going to have to spend like an hour and a half or two hours instead to, you know, capture the same five tiles. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, please do drop a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.